Hello everyone, in this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to make a virtual joystick in Ghetto 4. I am using these basic assets to create my joystick. However, you can use any RS assets you would like. Now, let's create a new 2D scene. I'll call it joystick. Let's save that. Now, let's create the ring. So we'll just drag and drop it in. And I will also need the knob. Then let's also create a button that will fully surround everything. This will detect if we are actually pressing down or not. So you can go ahead and scale this up. And in that button, head over to visibility, self-modulate, drag down the alpha value to zero. I've gone ahead and renamed my sprites. Let's go ahead and create two scripts, one for the joystick and one for the knob. All the joystick will hold is just one variable, and that will be called pause vector. This will be the vector that our knob produces, and it will be translated to our player. So we'll just preset this to a vector two. Now let's head over to our button. Go over to node. We need to get our button down, connect that to the knob script, and also the button up, connect that to the knob script. Now we will create a new Boolean. We'll call this pressing. We'll set this to false, hit the button down. We are pressing, so pressing will be set to true. And if not, pressing will get false. Now let's create two variables. One will be an export variable, which will be our maximum length that we want to drag our joystick out to. Let's set this to 50 because that will match up with my current art asset. However, you can adjust this. And also a dead zone. We'll set this to five. We also need to reference the joystick. So if I press control and I drag over this, it will reference the joystick. And let's rename that to parent. Now in our process function, let's check if pressing, if we are pressing, and if we are, let's get the global mouse position. Check the distance to our parent dot global position. And let's make sure that that is less than or equal to our maximum length. And if it is, we will set our global position to the global mouse position. And in my main scene, if we drag and drop our joystick, if I press play, you'll see that already, it will start going to our mouse if we are with inside of it. However, there are a few issues with it. One being, if I let go, it will just stay there. To fix this, let's create an else statement. It will set our global position to lerp, so it will smoothly transition back. We'll pass in our global position and our parent dot global position. Pass in delta equals to times 10. Now, if we press play and I drag it and I let go, it will go back to the center. And we can speed up a little bit if you don't like that transition. Another issue is if we drag, we cannot keep dragging the joystick around while we're outside of the circle. To fix this, let's first check if we are outside of it by creating an else statement on the less than max length. Then let's create a new variable. We'll call this angle. We'll set this to our parent dot global position dot angle to point. And we're gonna get the angle to the get global mass position. Now let's go ahead and set our global position dot x to the parent dot global position dot x plus the cosine of this angle multiplied by our max length. And we're going to do the same thing for the dot y with the dot y of the parent position. However, we need to get the sine. And now, even when we go outside of it, it will still follow the mouse and it will stay on its track until we go back inside. Currently, we have an issue where if we increase the size of our joystick, the max length will not change and it will act kind of wonky. We can fix this by simply setting the max length and assuming that we have a uniform size. We can multiply that by the parent dot scale dot x. And no matter what scale you're at now, it will work just the same. Now to send this data over to our player, let's create a new function. Let's call it calculate vector. And inside of it, let's first check if our global position dot x 
subtracted by the parent dot global position dot x. And we're going to need to get the absolute value of this. So let's do ABS and surround this. If this is greater than or equal to our dead zone that we set before. If it is, let's go copy over this difference that we're setting. And we will set our parent dot position vector that we set before dot x to this difference. When let's divide this by maximum length. This is so we get a zero to one value. And we're just gonna do the exact same thing for the y axis. Now let's go ahead and call this function instead of our if pressing, calculate vector. We also need to reset the vector even if we're not pressing. So in here, let's set parent dot pause vector. Set this to vector two, zero, and zero. And if we would like to see these values outside of everything, let's go ahead and print parent dot pause vector. Now for press play, we'll drag up. You'll see that the value changes according to where we have our music. And if we let go, it will reset to zero. In our main scene, I have the player. The player is simply a character body with a sprite and a collision shape. And the script, you may already have stuff here. However, this is how you incorporate the joystick. So if we press control and drag over our joystick, we'll reference it. Let's also set a variable called speed. We'll set this to 300 for now. Let's create a new function, physics process delta. We'll set our variable direction to our joystick dot pause vector. And we'll check if we have a direction. If we do, we'll set our velocity to direction times speed. And else velocity, we'll just get a vector to zero, zero. And finally, we move and slide. And now let's press play. And if we move our joystick, our player will move with it. I've gone ahead and uploaded this project to my GitHub, which will be linked in the description down below. Anyways, guys, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you.